Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today I'm going to pot up my tomato plants and we're going to have 12 fun facts about tomatoes that perhaps you didn't know. Come along. Well, tomatoes. Here are my tomato starts and I've got to get them potted up because they're getting too big for these tiny little cells. And potting up tomatoes is a real simple thing, but it's tedious. And I didn't want to sit here and pot up these tomatoes and bore you with, you know, 30 minutes of me putting tomatoes in cups. So I thought we'd talk about tomato trivia. I've got some facts here that I've compiled together. And as I'm doing this, well, I'll just talk to you about some of these interesting facts about tomatoes. So let's go. Let's get started. First, let me show you how I'm going to do this. So you can see my starts are in these typical little cheap seed trays. And I've cut them apart into rows that are e easier to manage. But they're getting too big for these tiny little cells and they need to get one more home before they go into the garden. So we're going to pot these up into cups and I'll show you how I'm going to do that today. Here's what I'm using to pot up into, just a typical 16 ounce styrofoam cup. And I punch some holes in the bottom and a couple of holes on the side and uh, that's for drainage. And I'm going to use my potting soil. This is the leftover seed starting mix that I had. Plus I added some good quality potting soil to this. We're just going to put our plants in these cups. Now, some people get on to me about using these styrofoam cups. They say, hey, it's bad for the environment. Yeah, yeah, well, you'd rather me be handling this and be a steward of this material than some joker who's going to throw this out the car window. Um, there's a benefit to this. So styrofoam offers insulation to, to the plant in it, these formative years when these plants are tiny little guys like this. They're sensitive. These plants already got zapped today because they ran out of water while they were hardening off and they all wilted. I had to perk them back up. They're very sensitive. This helps to insulate the soil. If I'm going to keep these outside and the sun's going to shine on this cup, well, you can plant in the, in the black planters that are specifically made for gardens, but that black absorbs heat and this is such a small soil sample that it heats up really quick. It evaporates all the moisture and the plant goes kaput. So I like these because they offer me a little bit of insulation, not a lot, but some, and that's what styrofoam does. So basically, I'm just gonna get some of this soil, put it down here and pop one of these plants out. Now these, these plants are more wet than I'd like them to be because I had to do some emergency moisturizing today. And once I get them out, you can see the roots are, well, they're running around in circles in that. They're, they're wanting to go in. I'm just going to drop it down in here and fill in with soil. Easy as that. Now these tomatoes, you can plant them up the stem, doesn't matter. All those hairs have potential to become another plant. Now before I put this down, I'm going to write the name on the side of the cup. That's another advantage of these styrofoam cups, is that you can just write the name right on there. You don't have to make a whole bunch of little tags. And I'm just going to use a Sharpie. Let's see, this is a Jolene. This is a determinate tomato. So I'm going to put a big D on there so I'll know that it's a determinate and the name. I'm also going to store them in these trays here. I got these trays at the store and I'm just going to drop them in one by one, line them up. And we'll be on our way to gardening this year with tomatoes. Well, that's a loud cardinal, isn't it? All right, fun facts. Did you know that in Italy, tomatoes are not native? And you wouldn't think that because tomatoes are such a part of the Italian cuisine. It's a staple, right? Tomato sauce, pizza, think of all the things they use tomatoes for. Yet, tomatoes are not native to Italy. That blew me away. Tomatoes are a Western South American native. They come from Western South America and were brought over to Europe in the 16th century. So it makes you wonder, what did they eat in Italy before the 16th century? That would be an interesting study. Now you want to pack these down a little bit. I also amended the soil very lightly, just very lightly, with a uh, Ivy Organics 3-in-1 not a three-in-one, is it? I'll have to get the bag, hang on. I also amended this just lightly with this Ivy Organics all-purpose fertilizer. It's a 3-3-3, and it is a slow release. Now, 
these tomatoes aren't going to live in these cups for more than three or four weeks max but that fertilizer will be there in that soil when I put it in the garden so it can't hurt this is good stuff if you want to support my channel go over to Ivy Organics and buy some fertilizer buy anything there and use my code gumbo10 and you'll get 10% off of your order Charles over there is a good guy and he's got some good products all right let's keep going our second fun fact about tomatoes is that early on they were thought to be in America at least they were thought to be poisonous and that's because they are members of the nightshade family and most nightshades are in fact poisonous and I learned about this first just kind of by general lore garden talk you know but I also read a book called the tomato in America and uh, in that book they talked about the perception of this plant and its fruit so hmm 1600s or uh, 1500s they're eating tomatoes in Italy but over here in the United States we didn't get them until a little, little bit later and we thought that they were poisonous just goes to show you that uh, knowledge travels slowly knowledge travels slower than tomatoes <laughs> all right I got another one potted up here see it's pretty easy and you can sit yourself down and just get going in a like a production line and pot these up all right Jolene I dulled the tip of my sharpie marker so it's a little bit easier fun facts about tomatoes number three did you know let me make sure I get it right I have my notes here um, you know, when you t think about tomatoes, do you think it's a fruit or a vegetable? Well, we know it's got seeds in it, so technically it's a fruit. But in 1893, the United States, uh, the Supreme Court officially classified the tomato as a vegetable. And the reason for that was tariff purposes. Um, the decision was based on its culinary uses rather than the fact that it was a botanical classification of, of fruit. And, uh, yeah, so technically speaking in the United States you can call tomatoes a vegetable and the government will back you up on that fun fact did you know that there are over 10,000 varieties of tomatoes tomatoes are the most beloved gardening plant in well in the world actually and because of that people have been breeding tomatoes and there are over 10,000 varieties there are um, you know all kinds of colors they come from white to green to yellow to orange to red to deep deep purple and uh, yeah 10,000 varieties and they keep coming people are still breeding tomatoes in fact you probably heard the 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 kerfuffle that happened when Baker Creek sent out their catalog and had those beautiful those deep deep purple tomatoes on there and I thought there's something fishy about that and then I saw other companies issuing similar tomatoes that were this deep deep like Caesar purple you know and I thought yeah that's that's something turns out that other companies said yes this is a new version of the tomato that has been genetically modified with uh, a flower that is very purple and so it's the very first GMO that is actually available to people who don't sign contracts and pay big fees to, to grow GMO products previously you couldn't get a GMO unless you were a farmer and had a very important um, contract signed and restrictions on your what you're going to do with those GMOs but now all of a sudden we have this deep deep purple GMO tomato it's beautiful and it's probably actually very good for you with all that color in it but Baker Creek uh, said hey we're sorry we, we have made a vow not to sell GMOs and so they took them off their shelves but I kind of want to grow that tomato I think it would be fun I want to see what it's all about so that's just one of 10,000 varieties Put that right there fun fact Tomatoes are super rich in nutrients. Let's do one more Jolene. 
They are super rich in nutrients. They're an excellent source of vitamin C and they have lots of potassium in them. They contain lots of nutrients, um, antioxidants like lycopene and that's been linked to various health benefits. Tomatoes are good for you. Eat your tomatoes. They are uh, super dense in nutrition. All right, let's see, let's find the best one. You look like a good one. Sometimes when you're growing a garden, you have to sacrifice some plants for others. You have to select the strongest plants and the rest of your plants, well, they just kind of, maybe they go to compost. Maybe you don't have room for them all. I've had people get upset with me for tossing tomato plants away into the compost bin like at this size like say this is all the Jolene's I want to grow I selected the strongest out of my seed tray and now I've got four plants left over what are you going to do with these four plants well you can compost them and people get upset and say you're throwing them away no you're putting them in compost you're going to eat them later in some other plant right they're going to they're still serving you <laughs> you're not wasting them if you throw that in compost and I think that's what I might do another fun fact did you know that tomatoes are globally consumed? Every culture uses tomatoes, even the cultures you don't think would use them in their cuisine like China. Uh, tomatoes are most widely consumed fruit in the whole world, chiefly in Italian sauces and Mexican dishes, and Americans eat them by the, by the score. They are the most heavily imported and exported vegetable in the world. That is very interesting to me and I didn't expect it to be that way. But it makes sense considering that the tomato is the most popular garden vegetable on the planet. Why wouldn't it be also the most popular, well one of the most popular vegetables in the world consumed everywhere. All right. Another harvest moon here. Just gonna pop these out of their little cell. I do like these cheap vacuform cells. I have tried all the expensive ones and they all work. But on the rigid ones, you have to get a stick and pop the th these things out from below. On uh, some of them, they, I always come back to these cheap vacuform trays that you can buy for five or six bucks down at the Home, Home Depot. Um, you don't get but a year or two out of the out of the plastic part, but you can get a year or two out of it if you if you're careful. <sighs> Harvest moon. Fun fact about these tomatoes is that they actually are perennial plants in their native environment. They will grow multiple years. Wow, we got an air show going on. Uh, they're perennials, but we treat them, we tend to treat them as annuals in the U.S. Uh, because they're sensitive to frost. And here up in the U.S., even here in Zone 9B, we get freezes and tomatoes don't survive through that. And tomatoes, uh, if you take them in, if you pot them, if you take them in and protect them during the winter, you can grow multiple years of tomatoes. And that's how you can get tomatoes in January, February. Uh, fresh tomatoes, imagine that. It's because they are technically a perennial plant. So here we are again. I gotta keep in mind what I'm planting here. Harvest moon. Did you know, here's a fun fact. Tomatoes are self-pollinating. They are self-pollinating. That means they don't, you don't need another tomato plant. Because they're self-pollinating, you'll see people go by and shake their tomato plant or take one of those electric toothbrushes and go touch their tomato plants and the vibration causes the pollen to fall off inside the flower and um, I think from the stamens and sticks to the pistil. So you've, you could self-pollinate, but um, there's a word for it. They call it clistogamy. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not a botanist, but they can be also be pollinated by insects and birds and bees and by you coming along and hand pollinating um, they but they can pollinate themselves without extra help so that is a fun fact that i hope most gardeners know 
There you go. Here's another fun fact. These tomatoes originate in Western South America. The tomato plant originated there and it was domesticated by indigenous peoples there. And of course, they enjoyed eating these tomatoes for a long time. But it was the Spaniards who, of course, colonized South America, basically uh, moved in. And they took it back to Spain and domesticated the plant. And so we can thank the Spaniards for a lot of things. And we can kind of be upset about the Spaniards for a lot of things. But one thing we can be grateful for is that they took these tomatoes and domesticated them. That means they made them where you could save seeds. Those seeds were stable. And every time you grew a tomato plant, you got a tomato plant, and then they began breeding them for whatever traits they were uh, looking for. Larger fruits, perhaps, uh, tastier fruits, uh, ability to store longer. These things are, are um, what you might do to, uh, in, in, they're the traits you might look for when you're breeding the, these plants. So thank you, Spain. Viva España. Look, I got two of them in this one. That's a bonus plant. Now you could tease those apart if you wanted to. Um, I'm probably just going to leave them in there. Again, this is the kind of root you want. You want your root ball to look like that. Any more than that and the, the plant's going to be stressed out. You know, there's a little bit of fungus on the top, we just pick it off. And that fungus doesn't really matter in the end. Fun fact about the tomato, did you know that the world's largest, what do you think the, the country is that produces the most tomatoes? Would you think it's the United States? Maybe it's Mexico with their good weather. No, the largest producer of the tomato globally is China. They account for the most significant portion of the world's tomato production. And uh, the other leading countries are India and the United States. But China, would you think, I mean, when you think Chinese food, you don't think tomatoes, do you? But China produces a lot of things they don't use. They produce them for export. The problem with China is that they are in demographic decline. Their one-child policy that this has been overturned long ago, but it affected them. They don't have enough people. All their old workers are dying off and there's not anyone to replace them. And the youth of today, they don't want to work like that. So China is in demographic decline. United States is no longer committed to protecting the blue waters of the world's oceans uh, for globalization and globalized trade. And therefore, our economies might be looking a little bit different in the future. Yeah. Pay attention to what's going on around you, folks. These are the Edox cherry tomato. You can only get them at Johnny's Select Seeds because they breed them. And they breed them for greenhouse growth specifically, but I grow them outside. But I grow them up a string and I trim them to only having 12 sections of leaves. And everything below that gets trimmed off, except for the big giant trusses of delicious cherry tomatoes that are so good that I've made sauce out of them. And it's, these are just my favorite tomato. And even if you let them sprawl, they produce heavily. I let them sprawl, I think it was last year, and they were choked out with weeds, but they still, they gave me tons and tons of cherry tomatoes well through the summer. Edox, here's how you spell it, E-D-O-X. Edox, delicious tomato. All right, fun fact. Heirloom tomatoes, Let, let's talk about the, the heirloom versus open pollinated versus hybrid. Now, you probably know this already because most gardeners do, but an open pollinated plant is one that, look, we got three in that one. An open pollinated plant is one that um, always produces the same kind of fruit. Like if you've got a Roma tomato, it's open pollinated. It doesn't matter what other kind of tomato plant pollinates that Roma tomato plant, you will always get a Roma tomato. Because that 
uh, that variety has been stabilized. It wants they, somebody bred for that and it's stabilized. Every time it pollinates it gives you the same thing. Um, that's what open pollinated means. It means that any old tomato plant can come along and pollinate your Edox F1 and I'm going to get Edox fruit on that plant. Now that doesn't mean that the seeds will produce a new plant with the same variety. No, if you have the mix there of varieties in pollination, what you're going to get in the, second, in the next generation is a hybrid. And that's what hybridized, uh, hybrids are. They are a variety that is bred for certain traits. And lots and lots of varieties are cross-pollinated to produce a hybrid. And these Edox F1s, they are a hybrid. They are essentially engineered by breeding. And that's, that's what all plants have, you know, it's not like GMO. Breeding is engineering by breeding select varieties together and choosing certain traits. And that's how we get our varieties. Now, what is an heirloom? An heirloom is an open pollinated variety that is stable and has been around a long time such that it has gathered a story behind it. You know, like a, like a, a good story, some lore. It's a classic. All hybrids often don't produce true to type in the next generation. <sighs> some will, but most don't. Uh, but all open pollinated types and heirlooms will produce true to type when you save that seed. No matter what has pollinated it, it will still produce the type that you're after. Did you know that a tomato plant has a self-defense mechanism? They can defend themselves. They have a fascinating mechanism. When they feel, oh this one doesn't want to come out squeeze that a little more. When they feel attacked by herbivores, animals that eat plants, they can produce a substance called a glycoalkaloid and that's a toxic compound that repels or poisons insects and certain small animals. So basically if you're a small insect and you're an herbivore, you eat plants, you don't want to eat the tomato plant. Of course, if you're a gardener, you know that doesn't go for all pests. If you've ever found a tomato hornworm in your tomatoes, you're horrified by how big it is and how big uh, a mess they can make. If you've ever found army worms in your tomatoes, you know that they can decimate your whole tomato crop in a matter of hours or days. So that fun fact might go for certain animals, but others it doesn't work for. And I think you can, you can tell that tomatoes are pretty hostile plants just by smelling them. They have that sharp, pungent smell. They've got all those little hairs. They just, I can understand why people might have thought these were poisonous back in the old days. Well, folks, the tomato, the world's most favorite gardening vegetable. I hope you're growing some. I hope you're enjoying your tomatoes. And I hope you learned something today. If you'd like to support our channel, like I said, head on over to Ivy Organics and buy stuff from Charles over there. Buy some three-in-one plant guard for your trees. Buy some fertilizer and use the code GUMBO10 and you'll get 10% off. And uh, yeah, you'll be supporting a good company that's producing some good products. Uh, if you'd like some quality seeds, head on over to Seeds for Generation. Use my link below in the description and you'll also be supporting our channel. Seeds for Generations is a family business and they've been expanding and uh, expanding gradually over the years. Their seed packets are absolutely beautiful and they're a great company to support. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.